the Nuggets aren't very interesting. Yeah, but Denver's not excited. They're just not a compelling team to talk about. They're not tune-in factor worthy. You're not going to see a lot of profiles on Nikola Jokic. Jokic collects it behind the back. Jamal Murray, not especially interesting. Murray with three seconds, lets it go for the win! Got it! Michael Porter Jr., not especially interesting. Oh my! Are we looking at Jokic as a top five player in the game? A lot of people don't, just because he hadn't had success once we got to the postseason. You have to run your offense through him, and it can only take you so far. If you're a casual basketball player, and you know the Nuggets are playing, you're going to breeze right by there. I mean, I have to be honest, I like it. We don't care, whatever, you know. Same old, same old. It just fuels us a little more, and um, it'll be sweeter when we win the chip. Considering the franchise's roots stem all the way back to the 1948-49 season, Denver's first title ever this year was a long time coming. However, considering their 2023 season was Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr.'s first year back from injury, KCP's first season in the Mile High, Christian Brown's rookie campaign, Calvin Booth's first year as general manager, plus the main core's first healthy campaign in the Jokic era, the Nuggets evidently aren't going anywhere. Given yesterday's video where Nick Wright, Kendrick Perkins, Gilbert Arenas, and Stephen A. Smith voiced their displeasure about Jokic, folks acting salty in the lead up to Colorado achieving the ultimate glory was prevalent. But as you'll find out, the disrespect doesn't simply stop with the mainstream. Stick around to see what I'm talking about in terms of the extra added fuel from some additional doubters, then to find out how Denver's star power and supporting cast made them all silent. Before that, I just wanted to give a massive thank you for 100k subscribers. Thank you to first and foremost the higher power for blessing me with this challengingly confusing yet ultimately instrumental life I get to live. Thank you to my entire family for believing in me. Thank you to those of you who know who you are that taught me the game of basketball, including my high school coaches for my short-lived time as a player at Northern Secondary School in Toronto. Thank you to my hockey coaches and teammates growing up for instilling my competitive nature. Thank you to everyone who liked, commented, subscribed, and or shared, plus continued to support me through the roller coaster ride of ups and downs. Thank you to the players for your dedication to the game, which has and continues to grow my love of basketball. Thank you to the late Kobe Bean Bryant for inspiring my passion for the game. Thank you to the late James Naismith for inventing this beautiful sport. This journey is only just getting started. I wanted to also say that you'll know more about your boy very soon, as I'm not even 25 years old and plan on continuing to steadily improve this content for you. Love each and every one of you. It's a surreal moment to hit 100,000 subs here on YouTube, and again, I can't thank you watching enough for making it happen. So the mainstream media disrespect towards the Denver Nuggets you heard at the very start of this video is far from the only bit of tomfoolery Nugget fans were forced to endure because conventional mediums are also being receded. Just take where Philadelphia 76er staff writer Sean Bernard ranked the number one seeded Nuggets in his pre-playoff power ranking. My number eight, I have the Denver Nuggets here. I just don't believe in them. I just don't think it's going to translate to the playoffs defensively. Like, as, as great as Nikola Jokic is offensively, there's still going to be possessions where, like, he is a liability on the floor defensively. He's just not a playoff defender. And my kind of opinion on center, I believe to be an effective playoff defender as a big man, you have to either be an elite shot blocker or able to switch out in the perimeter and guard guards. You have to be able to do at least one of those things. Jokic can't do either of them. And to me, like that's red flags and a problem from a roster construction aspect. In response to the point about Jokic not being a defensive center, Nikola proceeded to give up just 0.74 points per possession guarding the pick and roll, hold attackers to 40% shooting from the field, plus create a turnover on 9% of those possessions. But what if I told you that even after the Nuggets proved all of the doubters wrong, whether it was from yesterday's video, the intro of today's video, or what you just heard, people are still mad, refusing to respect that Denver is here to stay. Get a load of this guy. I don't know if I would outright say these guys are the biggest losers, but I will say they should be mentioned as losers in free agency. The Denver Nuggets are overrating their roster just a tad bit they're hoping guys like christian brown is brown inside and Peyton watson Murray. Murray. on the deck, 
Peyton Watson on defense has been an absolute terror. Take a leap, which is putting your trust in second-year players like that is a bit scary, and I don't think they have a necessary replacement for someone like Bruce Brown. I feel like that's going to be somewhere that they sorely miss. This guy's versatility and ball handling and playmaking ability when he came in was unmatched. His ability to cut, and I don't think Christian Brown's going to be able to replicate that. Peyton Watson's a little bit of an unknown. I do think he's a good player. The Denver Nuggets, after winning a championship, they should have attempted to find someone to replace Bruce Brown with. So they are uh, my loser of the free agency. Quit bitching and move forward. Quit bitching and move forward. Okay? Fact of the matter is, Christian Brown was a rotation rookie during the finals, which is as rare as it gets. And Peyton Watson just averaged 19 points per game on 52% shooting from the field in the summer league, displaying bona fide progression. Brown and Watson proved to be two of the most mature young players in the association all of last year, and doubting they can make the adequate development in year two of their pro careers is fairly blasphemous given their athletic upside and advancing skill as 2023 went on. While Bruce Brown and Jeff Green went to the Pacers and Rockets respectively, DeAndre Jordan, who was crucial to the locker room chemistry amidst the title run, re-upped on a contract to keep him in the mile high. On his NBA.com free agency profile, the following was written up about DJ, quote, Jordan's teammates praised his leadership his ability to blend an appropriate amount of humor with 15 seasons of NBA wisdom was instrumental in bringing home the first NBA championship to Denver, end quote. More on what DeAndre brought to the table on this channel as the offseason progresses. But main option Nikola Jokic, it's crazy to believe, is the all-time Denver Nuggets playoff leader in games played, points, assists, rebounds, triple-doubles, double-doubles, 30-point games, and free throws made. He's only 28 years old. Another stat from NBA University has been revealed when it comes to Nikola being able to get it done when it matters the very most. Jokic had the highest true shooting percentage excluding garbage time during the regular season of all players. Also according to NBA University, Michael Porter Jr. knocked down the highest percentage of three-pointers on wide-open deep-range attempts. Here was Porter Jr. speaking on contested threes. I'm one of the best shooters in the league, like humbly, like I can say that, but like I don't see contests. So a lot, you might be watching on TV and see me shoot a contested shot, but it doesn't feel contested to me. I might watch it like after I'm filming, I'm like, yo, I shot that. But really they don't feel contested and I make a lot of contested shots. Michael evidently doesn't struggle with contested dunks either, as while we've mentioned it a few times in prior Denver videos from this channel, this give-and-go backdoor cut leading to one-handed posterization of Kevin Durant will forever go down as a legacy playoff moment for MPJ. Regarding legacy moments, and this next fact alone proves that Jamal Murray's legacy will always be referenced with his 2023 postseason obliteration. Silencing every Murray doubter on the surface of planet Earth Champ Maul became one of three players in the 76-year history of the National Basketball Association to average these numbers, 25-plus points, 5-plus dimes, and 5-plus boards on shooting splits of 39-plus percent from deep and 90-plus percent from the foul line over the course of an entire playoff run. The other two legends to do that are Larry Bird, who achieved it in 1986, and Stephen Curry, who did it in four straight playoff runs from 2015 to 2018. It's safe to say Jamal is the second best point guard on the planet behind Curry and the best three-level scorer on the planet based off that fact. In addition to his ability to olive spring up for beastly throwdowns, pull up with finesse from distance, and let it fly from the in-between range like no other in the game today. Let me know which moment or fact stands out as iconic to you down below in the comments. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.